Hello everybody and welcome to another print formers review. These seem to go down pretty well with the fan base so I thought I'd take a look at one of the latest 3D printed kits on the market. Uh, my friend Margin over at print formers hooked me up with this version. It is of course the MP10 to Ultra Magnus conversion kit. It's to make our MP10 or the MP10U, depending on which model you have, look like a masterpiece style Ultra Magnus, but going back to the way that it was done in G1. More of a Marvel Comics vibe. The files are available free online, but it's the cost of the printing, etc. All the designer asks is that credit is given where credit is due. And before I take a look at the actual kit itself, we're gonna to have to transform our MP10 into his robot mode, and then just switch things around a little bit. You wanna just have the arms mounted around to the back with the fists out, and you want the smokestacks facing downwards, and you want these sections like so. Now I've actually got the modded arms. I wanted to try it with the Shadow Fisher upgrades as well, just to see if I can get it to work with this prime. And you just have the grill sections coming out to the side. And that's how prime needs to be before we can add the kit on. In essence, we're doing exactly what we did with the original toy back in the 80s. We had a white, Optimus Prime, and we'd fold his arms in as opposed to up, and then clip his legs into the armor. Starting off with the legs, everything on this is 3D printed as a kit. Uh, if you look closely, you can see the lines. That's what we get uh, when the printer prints these. They basically come across like so. So it makes a weave of plastic. Uh, it just needs to be sanded in some areas but the overall finish is pretty nice and it's a nice color it's a lighter shade than the masterpiece it's much more in keeping with the original g1 toy and much in over at print form was actually actually added a modified piece on which is this section here uh, we'll cover that when we get to vehicle mode it does have to be flexed slightly to get it over the latch like I said, we'll cover that when we do the transformation. And there's also a small stress mark on here as well, but that is not due to the printing. He said that's when he packaged it up, uh, it got jammed and he didn't see and he snapped it off. But that's been glued and the bond seems pretty darn strong. So I think we should be more than okay to go ahead. Some people are saying, why if we've got a Masterpiece Ultra Magnus, we would wanna buy an upgrade kit. It's because it's a huge homage to the original G1 toy, the Marvel comics, and in essence, the Dreamwave comics, because they had Magnus as an individual soldier who donned this armor. Taking a look at the upper torso, in essence, it's made up of these three sections. We've got the feet, the torso, and then we have a waist piece. Uh, the head sculpt is pretty nice. It's again, very kind of Marvel comics inspired a nice wide broad chest there we have the flap that comes down over the cover we have a large autobot insignia on the side there that is a sticker but we do have these launchers on the side of each arm now you will notice that the arms themselves are quite loose and the articulation on the kit itself isn't amazing it's not anything and toward there we have the designer's branding on the underside there. Again, giving credit where credit is due, but it's an ingenious little thing. And not only is it available for the MP10, it's available for the MP10V, the version that was made by Kuban Bao, and also the MPP10, the Weizhang version so if you want to make a really huge oversized kit then <laughs> the options the options definitely there but yeah even the look of the fists they're like the plug-in fists that we got with the original toy i just wish my original magnus had lasted as long as this and i could have done a nice comparison but yeah we do it definitely looks like Magnus, doesn't it? There's no shadow of a doubt. It comes in so many pieces. Uh, luckily enough, uh, this was pre-built 
when it was sent over to me but the instructions are all online alongside the design uh, i'll include a link in the description below and then we get the hip and waist pieces which clip around and it does exactly what it says on the chin nothing untoward there just a nice big hip skirt now, accessory wise mine did come with a gun but as you can see the gun has been damaged in transit now you can glue that and the bond is meant to be very strong on this plastic once it's been glued but yep mine arrived damaged unfortunately and we get three alternative faces we get a very kind of stern look we get the red faced look and then we get the open mouth again we'll cover how these are installed when we take a look at magnus as a whole and lastly we get this very overexposed <laughs> panel uh, for the back which clips over uh, but yeah again done in a nice strong plastic i'll actually include the link to martin's video as well because he does explain the differences in the kit and the assembly and how different types of plastic we better for certain areas well, let's start by bringing in this torso section you've got this flap at the back that goes upwards and our prime is going to come in the head goes between that gap the fists slide in and the whole piece just rocks and locks in like so that's fitted in there nicely move the gun holster section down this clip comes down and then moving that back up it pushes and locks that onto the back we can then bring in that hook section that we saw earlier on and that just slides in to the back like so finishing that back piece off bring this waist panel down we need that down at this point so when we slide the crotch plate on there's these two grooves here and those hooks are going to hook either side of those grooves which just helps everything to line up nicely and lock into place come around to the back flaps fold inwards we can bring this piece down and this piece down and at this point we're at that kind of awkward stage where prime looks like he's been hitting the gym but he's missed absolutely every leg day uh, <laughs> next task is to point prime's toes down the toe section comes up this piece lifts up like so and comes to the front and this piece drops down to the back and that now allows us to have room in there for the gas tank the leg just slides in this clips over the thighs it's very very clever indeed i love how everything kind of works in unison and then these can come back over and there's a notch just here that just hooks over the back of the tires here we have him fully transformed up uh, it's a lot more difficult to pose a big bot like this on a small little tiny turntable than i initially expected and i'll just pop this piece off as well it does all go on really nicely and as you can see from the back there this would definitely benefit from using the mp10u ko or maybe the new 711 optimus prime uh, but the kit itself is ruddy genius i know people say they don't like it as much as the official magnus which is fair enough but somebody's dreamt this up and it's incredibly well done now there's a lot of hard work gone into it the sculpt is very reminiscent of the g1 toy and it was kind of easy to put on i managed to do it and i'm not the most <laughs> um, uh, i'm not the most precise when it comes to doing things like this uh, i'm very i struggle a lot with my very fiddly fingers but i'm really happy with the overall result and i uh, completely regret selling off my mp10u because this would look uh, rather dashing fitted to a white 
Ultra Magnus. Here he is alongside the official Ultra Magnus. And as you can see, he's actually taller and actually looks very good alongside Rodimus Prime. It's got those huge nostalgia feels. Now I love the Masterpiece Ultra Magnus. Uh, I think it was a very good figure. Hence, I kept hold of that as opposed to Citizen Stack. Uh, but the kit itself is fun. It's enjoyable. Uh, it's well made. It looks like I remember Magnus. Uh, I personally feel the head sculpt itself is better than what we get on the official product. And all in all, it looks rather dashing on Prime. All right, now let's take a closer look. As you can see, that's a very nice head sculpt on there. We have left and right rotation. We have up and down pivot as well. Now the shoulders, well, that's kind of where this product fails the most, unfortunately. The shoulders can kind of go up and down and we can tilt inwards and outwards, but there's no real resistance there. Uh, and that's pretty much all we have with those arms. I would like them to have had a ratchet or something in there, but I know that's more difficult. Uh, we have a bend at the elbow. We have a rotation at the elbow. The fists are a single unit. We can't move those. The waist is kind of locked. We can use the upper thigh rotation, but the actual waist itself is all locked into place. The legs can come that far forwards and that far backwards. We can still make use of that knee bend. So we can get a kind of stepping pose going on there. And unfortunately we don't get anything on those feet either, but it's a big lump of a figure. Unfortunately, just not making use of the MP10 articulation and uh, the limitations on those shoulders, definitely where this product falls down. Uh, it's a shame really because it's almost there but just not quite. Now being a garage kit style piece to change the head, you will require a screwdriver to get in there and just unscrew that top piece. And before I screw everything in, let's just take a look at the other heads. This one's a slightly messed up around the corner of the mouth there. It still needs to be sanded down slightly. And there he is uh, looking somewhat surprised. <laughs> and there we have my favorite one, the red based version. Right, now let's transform him up into vehicle mode and see how that fares. Uh, to remove the kit, it is literally vice versa. We just backtrack on what we've already done by removing the sections at the back. Those rear flaps get that waist piece off first and just push and slide this out. It fits where it touches, that's for certain. <laughs> and we can fold this flap back upwards. And with everything undone, we can open up this piece, lift this one up, and then slide the armor off prime. And the same with the legs, move the thigh sections off, Untab the back piece on the leg, slide this out, and just work his legs out. Starting off with the legs, flip this panel here upwards. That's going to line up. And once that's in, we can bring this piece to the front. Make sure that the thigh piece is hooked up and around. And then we can bring both of those sections down like so. And in doing so, bring this piece down, glides and drops the wheels down. The torso lifts upwards out of these arm panels. These can then slide around and they then lock in to that section. Lifting the head up allows us to slide it down. We then want to rotate the head around and then with this piece fully lifted up and come to the arms and much like the original G1 toy, they unfold and the rockets rotate up and over to the top. Now the hands untab. One side is on a rocker and one side is on a slider. So just untab those two. This one rocks down. 
this piece slides downwards and this one rocks over and that's going to lock in again now that the fists are hidden the back connector just tabs in on this piece here there's also a point just here for the gun to slide in as well but obviously my gun is broken and we can just lift these up and over this is going to tab in kind of going by some uh, very mixed instructions but and i have to apologize for the lighting as well one of my lights actually blew mid video which was uh, awesome definitely what i had planned <laughs> You want to grab both sides you want to slide this up and over and there's tabs just on the underside there that's just going to link down and you want to push and slide those in and bring that bracket one of the back extra pieces of machine added with these tabs here uh, you, there is a little bit of flex in them but you need to just lock that over push until that locks in and that really does keep all of this base piece here secure these are all tabbed in like so and then this piece here i'm not entirely sure where it's meant to drop down there's these two slots here uh, they don't appear to go in anywhere uh, so this has kind of got to come here and just kind of i assume that it's literally just friction alone that keeps that locked into position we can bring in the gun now uh, what's left of the gun anyway and see if that makes a difference with the stability uh, that would just peg in either side of here there and there to this flip piece here underneath so this can now tab into the rear of the mp10 right and here we have him fully transformed up into his vehicle mode uh, it is still quite loose so uh, we've got to look at this as a prototype uh, it's still a lot of bits that need tweaking and fine tuning. Uh, I know that Marcin himself has put a slider on the underside here, he's made it so these wheels can now rotate. Things like this as well, these are all just suggested colors. They can be edited and changed over to the user's liking. Uh, but I know Marcin is working on uh, ankle tilt, etc., for the design. Uh, this doesn't really lock in anywhere. Uh, but as a prototype, as a general idea, I love how it works, but they do need to tweak those shoulders and an ankle tilt would be fantastic as well. Uh, all of this locks together nicely, but it's just a bit loose around here. The joints need to be tightened and the overall finish is good, but it definitely needs improving uh, and i definitely need a white mp10 and a new light apparently it all started when my dog whom is still a puppy decided to chew through my wiring because uh, he's teething how he didn't get a shock i don't know but he chewed through the wire so i found another cable and uh, it doesn't work very well uh, it seems to be very temperamental uh, for all i know he could have chewed through this one as well but uh, you gotta love him <laughs> but yes i love what he's done here uh, these could maybe be silver i don't know but it is definitely obviously an ultra magnus trailer but it just doesn't really hold together as well as i would have liked we do have the options at the rear of the trailer for loading and unloading our masterpiece vehicles although there isn't a great deal of room for them to sit down inside there and we can still do what we did with the g1 toy which is slide it beyond these hooks like so and bring that down and then they can ramp up onto the top level as well so there we have it ladies and gentlemen the ultra magnus upgrade kit uh, with a few tweaks of course by print formers let me know your thoughts in the comments section below now bear in mind obviously this is a prototype it is a work in progress uh, but i have to give props to the designer the idea it's been floating around for quite some time but getting it to work in practice uh, it's very refreshing although it is definitely the most of dynamic figures at the moment uh, nothing to say that by the time this kit is finished that he won't have the articulation that his official masterpiece counterpart has it's not trying to replace the masterpiece ultra magnets it's just giving people options and fun ones 
at that. I love that people can do this. I love that people are using their own 3D printers and making mods. It's really bringing back to the days of garage kits and stuff like that. It's really refreshing. Now somebody please sculpt me a Red Hulk head for my Marvel Select Red Hulk because it doesn't look anything like Ross, does it? Uh, the old general needs like a tash, need a decent sculpted head. Somebody do that for me. I'm sure you guys out there have some amazing sculpting skills. Once again, I'd like to thank Printformers for letting me have a look at this test shot and I really do look forward to seeing what else he can tweak and fine tune. Props again to the designer that made this file available free. I've included a link to all of those in the description section below. Until next time for myself and Ultra Magnus C Prime. <laughs> uh, goodbye. <laughs>